My name is Kieran, I'm here to entertain you, yeah. Midwest Speakers Bureau Showcase 2011. Yeah! I feel it, man. I just flew in here all the way from Nashville, y'all. And got the fun experience of flying in to Des Moines International. Yeah, I like it. I've done it before. I've done it enough to know that I get to play that little game when I'm coming in. I never know. Oh, are we going to come into gate one or gate two? Yeah. Yeah. Gate two. Yeah, a little musical journey can do some impressions of famous singers. We can start out with two singers, fall in the category of singers I kind of like, but I can't understand a word they say. And as far as I can tell, this may be the earliest that impressions have ever been done anywhere. My impression of the singer, Sting. Most of you know who Sting is? I think so. I'm only asking because I had a show in Texas and this guy did not know who Sting was. And I said, I'll give you a hint. I said, he's a singer from the UK. I said, you know where the UK is, right? He said, I think it's up by the Circle K. <laughs> Do you have Circle K stores here? Wish you did, that joke could have rocked. <laughs> It just wouldn't be funny to say he wanted to know if the Circle K was up by the come and go. That's just, that's not good. All right, Sting. I like him, but I can't understand him. I didn't get any of that. Impressions. Come on, you'll never see me again. <laughs> All right, my impression Bruce Springsteen. I like him, but I can't understand him. You ever notice how Bruce starts dancing around on the stage? It looks kind of like he's sneaking up on the microphone. He's all like. Oh gosh, choreography. <laughs> Bruce. Oh, but I gotta tell you this real quick. Everything has to be real quick because your timer, can you slow it down, Diane? It's freaking me out. Okay, I'm right. One time I was doing my Bruce impression at a club in New York City. It's about a year and a half ago. Anybody here from New York City? <laughs> no, we're all from pretty much right here in the Midwest. Yeah, no, we we don't much move away from Iowa. Yeah, Wisconsin. No, we we don't actually don't like new people coming in either. You know. <laughs> all right, let's ask that question. If there's anybody from New York City, just because I enjoy the fact that every now and then I'll have a guy go, "Woo, yeah, right here in New York City," and I'll go, "What part?" And he'll go, "Jersey." <laughs> And all like, somebody needs to repeat geology. <laughs> so I'm in this club in New York City. I asked this, this guy does not think I can do Bruce Springsteen. He goes, hey buddy, no way you can do an impression of the boss. I'm all intimidated. I said, you're being kind of negative. On the road to success. I said, what's your name? He said, Vinny. And then he said, freaking A. And I said, Vinny, what does freaking A mean? Because I'm from the South and we don't have it yet. <laughs> and he explained to me, it's the New York City alphabet. And he illustrated, he said, freaking A, freaking B, freaking C, freaking D. I'd actually heard the joke before, but I was intrigued with the fact that he did the whole alphabet. 
Like I hadn't got the concept by somewhere around freaking W. <laughs> but wait. <laughs> Come here. In the middle of the alphabet, I'm almost positive that he said freaking LMNOP. <laughs> It's not as funny over there. All right, Bruce Springsteen, I like him, but I can't understand. I'll hold you in my arms, in the bad way, in all of her, 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 oh, how you hear the word, how you last night. an entertainment show but I also do a speaking show with content and mixed comedy and uh, serious matters and some and some original music and two of the things I, I talk about is adaptability and uh, teamwork and uh, so adaptability is something that comes up in my life a lot starting when I was young because I had a weird name um, I want to tell you about my name real quick um, my first name is Kier can you say it Kier is short for Kieran my parents named me Kieran because apparently they thought it would be hilarious. Because <laughs> Kieran sounds a little bit like a girl's name, doesn't it? Shut up. <laughs> Third grade, I shortened it from Kieran to Kier because I was being adaptable. People says, what did that get, that adaptation? I said, that got me a name that's closer to Buck. <laughs> you got a problem with that? One day after school, I asked my mom, I said, how come you and dad named me Kieran? Now my mom, super duper positive. Everybody in this room, meet my mom, tell her the worst thing you've ever done. Step back and give her 15 seconds because she's about to turn into something positive. She'll flip it right in front of you. Well, we're still expecting big things from you, mister. <laughs> <laughs> you call us when you get out of jail. <laughs> Folks, her name is Hope. Who needs that kind of pressure? <laughs> Sometimes I call my mom and I tell her bad stuff that did not actually happen just to have a little game with her and see how long it takes her to flip it. Mom, I'm in Des Moines and I robbed a bank and I'm going to jail for about 20 years. She goes, well, sweetheart, you needed a rest. <laughs> she said, the reason they named me Kieran is that it's a big name in Ireland. I said, you didn't get the memo. She said, what memo? I said, it's the worst name where we live. But then I adapted that piece of information. Later in the day, it actually made me feel good. Because I was thinking maybe there's some kid in Ireland named Buck getting his butt whipped. <laughs> My last name is Ermiter, Ermiter, something like that. <laughs> I don't know, not sure how to say it. A lot of people worry about identity theft these days. It's a big issue. I'm praying for it. Now, I don't know if it's because of having a weird name, but uh, I never had good luck with the ladies. This was the first time I had a really big moment in my life when I became adaptable. Uh, I was about 16. I was in high school. I couldn't get a date. My best friend said, man, you know what you need to do? He said, what? He said, you need to learn to play the guitar, because chicks dig that. So, folks, I'm telling you, I was 16. I got a guitar. I took a few lessons. I learned to play, and I found out really quick that it makes no difference. <laughs> Another night, adaptability. I was in a club, I asked this girl to dance. She said, no, I got adaptable. I got the guitar, I walked right back up to the same young lady, only now I'm channeling Marvin Gaye, the R&B singer that drives the ladies wild. I said, are you sure you don't wanna dance with me? <laughs> oh no, he didn't. <laughs> yeah, you don't even have to know Marvin Gaye right there. You just hear that wah wah guitar music, it sounds like somebody's about to have sex. It turned out not to be me. She said no. I said, man, I just got turned down me and Marvin Gaye at the same time. So I bet she can't turn down me, Marvin Gaye, and Barry White. I don't think that would I'm trying to hold my 
the feelings were so long Let's get it on For this next impression, we're going to have a little team building exercise. I decided the young lady right here in the black sweater with the hair in the uh, ponytail, would you help me with an impression? Come on up. Stairs right there. She is so laconic, and I don't even know what that means. <laughs> what is your name, young lady? Rachel. Rachel, come on up. Give her a hand. Just stand on my right if you will. Where are you from, Rachel? Uh, Ames. Ames, Iowa. I have been there. Lovely town, and I'm glad to have you as a part of my show. You're going to help me do my Neil Young impression. Are you willing? Come a little closer. What do I want you to do? Put your right hand out. Team building. You're going to help me. Put your right hand harmonica like this. When I wink, you'll put the harmonica right there. When I wink again, you take it back away. That's all there is to it. She so doesn't care. All right. You know, you're kind of cute, and you're expecting. Yes. Makes you a very beautiful woman. I'm going to pay quick tribute to you, if you don't mind. Quick tribute to Rachel. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> See, usually I just say, oh, baby, there, but there isn't a baby involved. That was more adaptability. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly sooner, but you make the call. We're gonna start again. You've never done this before. If I don't wink, you don't do jack. You smell good. She doesn't care. How long? Searching for a heart or cold, I get no. Keep me searching for. She doesn't care. <laughs> wax on, wax off. Keeps me searching for a heart or cold. Big finish. Uh -huh. Scared. She's ready. Yeah, for Rachel. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, her whole tone was like she does this every day. <laughs> Well, you guys, I just got a little bit of time left, and so I'm going to launch into something that I will start and I will not finish. A big part of my show is I do something that's called the History of Rock and Roll Guitar Riffs According to Me. I'm going to fly through some stuff, and like I said, I'm only going to get a little bit of ways. But you've been a lot of fun. I hope the rest of the day goes great. Thank you, my dear friend Julie and my dear friend Angel, for asking me to be a part of this again today. And you guys have a great day, and here we go. Are you ready to rock? Yeah. All right, pretty good over here, that side. That'll have to do. <laughs> I'm going to do this not in the order that I normally do it. All right, here we go. This one right here. Any old hippies in the room? Where are you? Old hippies in the room. Been waiting so long. Okay, clearly just me. To be where I'm going. In 